What's up? Brandon Lilly here. Was asked this question a couple weeks ago and uh, been trying to really give it the attention that it needs and answer it properly. And in doing so, um, the video just becomes too long to send it to Mark Bell with any kind of quality or resolution. Um, so I'm going to just post it on my wall and link it to Mark. It's a question that we both get a lot of times. One, because uh, Mark is the inventor of the slingshot, and the other because I invented the cube, and Mark trains the cube, and I use the slingshot. So, um, to answer the question, how do you best implement the slingshot on the cube, or what do you think is the most effective way to do so, um, this is it. You have three days in the rotation of the heavy, the rep day, and the explosive day. And then you have your bodybuilding day. Well, I don't really recommend using it so much on the speed day. We will from time to time, but our staples or the days that we always tend to use the slingshot are our heavy day and our rep day. And what I'll explain is on our heavy day, there's a few ways that you can use it here. Let's say that, for example, you work up to 405 for three sets of two or two sets of two. After that, we always try to recommend a 5 to 10% jump. So for 400 pounds, a 5% jump would be 20 pounds. A 10% jump would be 40 pounds. And we would try to stay within that rep scheme. A set of two with 420, a set of two with 440. Shut it down. What we're trying to do is to keep the jumps manageable and realistic to what you'll actually be handling in the near future. Uh, it's one of the principles of the West Side Method that Louis calls the future method. You don't use a weight that's so enormous that you're not actually going to be able to handle that. That's why some of the products that come out make no sense to me. Um, you know, like one of the one of the slingshot competitors allows a person that normally benches five to five fifty to put eight hundred pounds. That just makes it an ego lift. It doesn't really carry over. How does something that's as, as effective as a bench shirt actually carry over to your lift? The slingshot is designed to have the most carryover to your actual lift. That's why, you know, Mark has made a name for himself with the product. It's been university tested and it's been approved. You know, it's been shown to be the most effective out there. So that's what you need to think of. You don't need to think, man, I want to press the most weight I can with this. You want to press the most weight that will transfer to you. And five to 10, maybe 15% is where you need to be working with the slingshot. So the other thing is you need to know how to use it properly. And that means not dropping it down and letting it bounce and rebound off your chest. That's what, that's what the slingshot can do it, to maximize the amount of weight that you're lifting. What you actually want to do is to drop it down, pause on your chest, let the, let the slingshot get it going just a little bit, and then have your body do the rest of the work. That's the way you're going to maximize the slingshot. I see a lot of people just drop and press, drop and press, drop and press. That again brings out the ego side of the lifting, minimizes the effectiveness of the tool. That's why I think a lot of people say, well, the slingshot doesn't work or this or the other. It's because they're not using it correctly. Know how to wear it and know how to use it. So back to the heavy day. If you're gonna take those five to 10% jumps and stay in the same rep range, that's what we do sometimes. <coughs> Usually do that earlier on in a cycle um, when we're still trying to to develop some more muscle, develop some more strength. Towards the end, when we're trying to milk the strength going into a, into a contest, what we'll probably do is, let's say we bench 400 pounds, we'll drop 10% back to 360. 40, 40 pounds off of 400 pounds is 360. And we'll drop down and do a rep set to failure. You know, it might be eight reps, it might be 10 reps, it might be 12 reps, whatever you can do but make sure that you absolutely push to failure. And one of the things that we've started this cycle is really trying to extend our sets, not necessarily all the time, but we've been doing some rest pause type stuff. Uh, Jim Windler just wrote a great article on 531 about using uh, rest pause. It's an absolutely great article. And rest pause is something that I started using uh, back in 2003 and 2004 when I was doing some bodybuilding and I was training with Dante Trudell, the uh, inventor of dog crap. So be aware uh, that there's a couple ways you can use it on the heavy day. 
jumping up 10%, going down 10% on our rep day. What we like to do is just do our sets. Let's say we had eight sets of three with 400, okay? Well, after our eight sets of three, we would do one more set with the same weight and rep it out to failure. And then we might take another five to 10% jump and do another set to failure. That's worked out really well. Uh, the last time that I did this, I actually, instead of uh, jumping, I was using 365 for my work sets. So on my ninth set, I did the, the same weight that I'd use for all my work sets, straight weight, no slingshot. I think I did it for 12 reps. And then I put my slingshot on and took a 10% jump and did that. Like I said, our, on our explosive day, we don't use it very much, but that's because our, our explosive day is kind of a recovery day, uh, the most designated recovery day in the rotation. But if you're feeling like you can use it, another way to do that would just to be similar to the rep day, stay with the same weight, do some long extended pauses, and do just a bunch of reps with it. Um, the slingshot is really, really good for that. It's really, really good <coughs> Excuse me, because it helps get weight in your hands that you're going to be holding in the future to develop those tendons and bones. That's what a lot of guys don't, don't think about. They only think about muscular strength. And that's why my problem, not to get way off sidetracked, but that's why my problem with getting beginners in gear too early they don't have the bone and tendon strength to, to handle the weights that the gear allows them to do. So build that base up and that's what the slingshot can do for you is you can wear it, use it properly, your bones will harden, your bones will get thicker, the tendons will strengthen, the muscle fibers will grow as well. Now on our bodybuilding day, something we've been doing, um, it used to be that we only did shoulders like overhead presses and then we would go on and do bicep curls and calves those were the main three staples but something we've thrown in at Berea Barbell is we've thrown in close grip bench presses that seems to be something that universally if you're doing close grip work your bench press just strengthens so we rotate weeks week one we'll lead off with overhead presses and we'll do close grips as a secondary exercise for a lot of reps week two We'll lead off with close grips, kind of heavier work, and then do overheads for a lot of reps. So those two are interchangeable. But what we'll do when we're wearing the slingshot, we'll put the slingshot on for the close grip presses after our work sets. We'll do four to five sets of eight to 12 reps on our, um, on our rep day. We'll do four to five sets of three to six reps on our heavy day. And then we'll stay within those exact rep ranges with a 10% jump and try to just get some more reps that way. Or like on a heavy bench day, you drop down 10% and just rep it out. Either way, you just wanna be able to start extending your sets, be able to do more and more weight, more and more reps because of the slingshot. But remember, the number one thing that will make you better, no, what, no matter what program you're on, is using the slingshot effectively. Wearing it properly, pausing on your chest, learning how to press through the top with your arms. Don't rely on the slingshot to do the lift for you. The slingshot's just an assistance tool. It's a great tool. You can get it at www.howmuchyoubench.net. Um, if you have any further questions, you can message me via Facebook, via Twitter, or go straight to the source, Mark Bell. But I think it's a great tool. I think it's the best assistance tool for your bench press out there. If you use the slingshot, you won't go wrong. You'll have a bigger bench for it, and that's what we're all striving for.